Hi, my name is Annalie Portman, and this is the sixth lesson in the series of Finnish Political Culture and System, i.e. what makes Finland tick. This time we will look at the president, his role, or her role, and what the institution looks like. Here you can see some of the insignia associated with the president, his personalized flag, the emblem of Finland, and the presidential palace. You can find out more about the president by uh, checking his website, presidenti.fi. Our current president is Sauli Niinistö. He has been the president since 2012. Why do we have a president? Well, we need a head of state. All human societies need a leader that often embodies somehow the group. And so heads of state are a common feature in all human societies. The authority of the state is often personified in someone. And whether that someone has the rights and powers of a, dict of a dictator or whether they are more ceremonial, yet they usually have powers and rights that other people don't. President Niinistö's New Year's speech from 2016 shows something of this, that as the head of state, he has the right to articulate what is important in this moment. Citizens, gains, Russia, Europe, security, competitiveness, stability are some of the things he lifted up in his speech. So the role of the head of the state is that they function as a gate opener for both values and things, but also um, ideas or ideologies or even actions that the organizations they lead, such as the state, need to take into account. Especially after the new constitution since the year 2000, the role of the president in Finland has been that of an opinion leader. He or she is the one who is looked up to to hear what we need to think about certain issues such as immigration, such as the EU, such as foreign policy in general. And so the president is above the parties and acts as behalf of the state. So his or her voice carries. He also or she signs treaties and opens the parliament. So he has rights that are part of his role as a president. Shared values, the ones he shares with the citizens, with his constituency, prove to be a contact point between the president and the people. And so therefore, the speeches of the president mirror to an extent what the values of the people are at any given moment. How they differ is then matter of more research. And in 2014, I published uh, my dissertation from Might to Mandate, in which I take a closer look at what the relationship between a leader, a head of a state, and the citizens are, and what the values are that these heads of state uh, promote. A leader is one of us. Haslam, Reicher and Plato in 2011 came out with a seminal book on the psychology of leadership. And they say that a prototypical example of what most makes distinguishes us from them is what a leader is. He's seen not as a figure standing alone, but as a member of the group he leads. And then he does it for us, so he or she promotes our interests rather than his or her own. He's also the one who can shape and define who we are. So often in public speeches you will hear things like, the Finns do this, or we in this country think that. And so therefore he also defines what we are like and defines the boundaries of us. A leader also makes us matter. She helps us realize our potential, and he, she or he helps us to live out our values. As long as a leader does this, the leader is seen as legitimate, and therefore uh, is given more power or more space to say the things she or he wants to say. Here is a short bit from 1995 when President Ahtisaari opened the parliament. He said, let us develop our nation responsibly and equally. Let us take care of nature. 
let us take care of the most weakest and most vulnerable members of society so that they can live in safety. Here you see the values that are important to the head of state and the citizens' reactions were much along the lines of the talking heads you can see on the slide. He's one of us. What he says is important to us. I ought to do that too. So the values also tell the citizens how to behave. Finnish values, as you probably remember, have to do with harmony, so unity with nature, world at peace, with egalitarianism, where social justice and equality are very important, and with intellectual autonomy, to be broad-minded and to stay curious. These are the kind of values that can also be found in the speeches of the head of state. The Finnish presidents, here is a cavalcade of them, have all led the country various lengths of time and of course steered them through uh, various historical events as well. And their presidencies have been shaped with the questions they've had to face. Niinistö from 2012 follows our first female president, Tarja Halonen who, by just by being elected a president, made a great statement about the equality of Finnish women in politics. Now, who then leads the foreign policy, the PM or the president? This has changed with the new constitution since year 2000. President versus government has been like a seesaw or a tug of war, and the balance used to be so that it was both constitutionally and politically strongly in favor of the president. But the uh, renewal or the reforms, the constitutional reforms in the year 2000 changed the picture so that now the president no longer can rule on his or her own but will work more closely together with the government. So the government has the final say in many matters and especially in EU matters it is the president uh, it is the Prime Minister who leads foreign policy and the President concentrates on other foreign policy matters. Trust in the President. Well, that's where the President still has a stronger point than the government. Most people, according to surveys, trust the President as he or she is seen to be above party politics. and. Instead of looking at the narrow interests of my party or my government, the president is seen as someone who looks at the interests or after the interests of all citizens, who actually makes us matter and is promoting us. Of course, this can also be due to the fact that Finns for decades lived under a president-led system and so got used to there being one person who is above everybody else and who has a stronger say. In a survey carried out in 2009, 90% of the people were in favor of the president also leading, so that there's a co-leadership. And 81% even supporting the idea that this co-leadership should be extended to all areas, even to EU policy. And that the president should have a stronger say in domestic politics. Now, her or his influence is more that of a value leader, opinion leader, of a, one who sways the opinion. There is also, of course, an authoritarian element in the Finnish political culture, a deference to those in authority. That can be seen, for instance, in many stances towards the EU. President is on the Facebook. So you can find out more about Sauli Niinistö and what he thinks by clicking onto Facebook. And here is some trivia. His wife is a poet, Jenny Haukil, and they have a dog called Lenno, a Boston Terrier. Roller skating is his favorite hobby, and he drives a Mercedes. More tragically, he is, is also not a stranger to things that strike unexpectedly, because he, with his two sons, is a, su a survivor of the Indonesian tsunami in 2003. And to broaden his political uh, touch, his nephew leads the Green Party, which is an interesting detail. Now it's time for you to think. Does your country have a president? What is the role of the president in your country? As you know, 
this is part of what makes Finland tick.